I've created all kinds of really weirdly shaped planes in the past couple months, but it wasn't until today that I realized the perfect shape has been staring me right in the face this entire time. And that is, of course, the wedge. Now, if you've been a fan of the channel for the past couple years, you understand that this is clearly the superior shape and more professional shape to use in whatever your venture may be. And if my venture today is to create the superior and most perfect and professional plane, I think we all know what needs to happen here. Now, you may be asking yourself, Scrapman, just a wedge? You're gonna make that thing fly? Isn't that gonna be hard to fly? Isn't it gonna be unbalanced and just weird aerodynamically? Now, if this was any other shape, I might agree with you, but we're talking about wedges here. This is gonna be the easiest time of my entire life. So let's start building this thing. All right, now fly. All right, I think it's gonna take a little bit more work than this. So if I'm gonna be trying to measure my success here, I need to set myself a goal. And this is not gonna be an easy goal by any plain standard. There was an accidental pun there. I meant like a like by the standard of any planes, not just any plain old stand. They both work, okay? But it's not gonna be as simple as just take off and land without crashing. This thing not only has to be superior at flying, it has to be able to put the pressure on in the air. It's gonna have to be a fighter plane as well. So my goal is to be able to fly around, drop bombs, shoot missiles, and shoot machine guns, and then come back for a successful landing. Now, I know that's a lot to ask for for a single plane, but this is the wedge plane we're talking about, so it's gonna be easy. All right, you know what, thinking ahead here, gotta remember that Trailmakers gives me a lot of options for wedges, so I'm going to use the uh, superior wedge of the wedges when it comes to aerodynamics, and that is a four x four wedge here. Oh yeah, check this thing out. Easy build, we should be pretty good to go. I mean, it's a wedge with rockets. Let's see how the first version performs, there we go. All right, this may take a little bit more work than I was initially anticipating. All right, back to the drawing board. Right now, the main issues seem to be um, lift, control surfaces, landing gear, and an all around lack of weaponry right now. Don't worry, it's gonna come together. It's a wedge, it can't fail. I will make this thing into a success if it's the last thing I do. All right, easy solution. Just had to add our standard wing and control surfaces to it. We got our wings, we got our tail, we got our ailerons and all of our control surfaces. Even, even I even put yaw on this thing. All right, you ready for this? We didn't even have landing gear to take off with, but I'm confident we got the superior shape on our side. Here we go. Oh no. All right, no, that's fine. Easy solution. Maybe I shouldn't get enough speed. You need, you need, to, you need to build up that speed. You know, ignore all the sparks. Ignore all the sparks on the runway there. Okay. All right. Don't know. It's still, it's, it's still salvageable. We can, we can make this work. You see, the problem is, there's not enough wedge. And you may be asking what that means. Well, you see, if I do this, and then I do this, and then, and then I do this. Don't, don't ask. Quite, stop. No, you'll see. There, all right. There we go. You see, I've magically put a wedge and a wedge together to create another wedge. That's just another reason why wedges are amazing. Never mind that you can literally do the exact same thing with bricks, okay? You see, the benefit that this is gonna have is the nose is now gonna have an equal wind resistance on the top and bottom of the craft, whereas before, the top had all these aerodynamic blocks, but as soon as the bottom caught wind of the wind, it would just push into it, causing us to flip back over. All right, so obviously I don't need a cockpit on the bottom of this thing, but a ton of other stuff can uh, happen down here, like the weaponry and things like that. We'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, now the only thing about this design is without landing gear, I pretty much have no way to take off because I'm just nosing right down into the ground. But I just want to see what it feels like. It's pretty much exactly what I was expecting. Unless I go tail sitter style. Okay, well, no, that doesn't work either. Hold on, I just got to not bounce off the ground. Look at that bounce. All right, let's just, let's embrace the bounce. There we go. All right, how's this thing feel? Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that, much better. Much better. How's the turning? Oh, it flies. It already flies pretty well. All right, we clearly are not set up for landing though without any landing gear. That bottom tail might need to go as well. I just copy and pasted everything just to see what would happen. 
But let's try to come in for a landing. This thing actually flies really well. <laughs> All right. And it's, uh, yeah, the bottom tail ruins everything. I don't think we actually lost any parts, though, surprisingly. We are not going to be a VTOL tail sitter. We saw how those went throughout history. All right, so before we add the weaponry and stuff, we need to make this thing capable of actually taking off so we can really test this thing out as we go along. Um, so I'm going to try to make myself some landing gear that can fold up nicely within the body of this thing. Okay, we now have landing gear. And you may be looking at this thing like, Scrap Man, it doesn't look like there's any landing gear. It just looks like there's a couple more wings on there and yes there are a couple more wings but there is also some hidden landing gear that comes out just like that and uh, I just have a hole there for now hopefully I can I'll fill that in don't worry about it it's just this is just prototype right now I've been doing a couple of test flights here and there oh boy I don't know I think the uh, I think the wheel actually kicked me up off the edge there which is kind of nice worked pretty well but as you can see I've adjusted some things uh, we still fly pretty nice. This is my first time actually flying with these added wings. Okay, that's interesting. I'm not trying to pitch up right now, but it's happening, and that's the, that's the direction I wanted to go anyway. All right, I may have had a little bit too much lift in the front. Actually, nope, never mind. Now it feels like I'm nosing down. All right, you know, it's just, it just it's how it catches the wind. It, 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 it's a unique object aerodynamically, for sure. Still superior though, still the, still the optimal shape. I mean, look how fast we're going. All right, but you're probably asking, can I land this thing? Um, well, I haven't tried yet, but let me go ahead and put the landing gear down, make my way back to the aircraft carrier and let's, uh, let's see what happens. Hold on, here we go, okay, oh no. All right, I just, it's it user error. This is user error, has nothing to do with the shape, nothing to do with the shape, all right? It's just user error right now. Oh my god, the pitch is like all or nothing right now. All right, come on. Come on, get back towards the runway. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, kind of glide pretty nicely, actually. I'm pretty happy with the gliding here. All right. Okay. Okay, once it gets stable. Ow. You know what? Not bad. All right, I think I have stabilized the wedge. It's, its power was so much to try to control, but I think I figured out how to stabilize it. You saw the landing gear is now automatic. As soon as I got off the carrier, the landing gear retracted. And now you can see, I, I look and feel so much more stable in the sky. You may notice that I took the tail fin off. I actually replaced that tail fin in the center with um, tail fins that are built into the side. You can see on either side. I do not have yaw anymore, but uh, I don't really use that yaw that much anyway in Trailmakers. It tends to cause a lot of adverse effects that make it more costly than beneficial. So I'll just uh, deal with my pitch and roll for now. And now let's see if the landing gear can actually do its job and uh, let us land successfully. I mean, look at how much more stable we're flying. Yaw would kind of be good right now, to be honest. All right, here we go. Look at, there it is. And, all right, well, if somebody didn't put a hole in the landing strip. Okay, so flight, check. Landing gear, check. Now we need the, the weapons. We need bombs, we need machine guns, we need missiles. I may have bitten off a little more than I can chew here, but I'm, I'm going, I'm going all the way. All right, it is time to check machine gun off the list because with the push of a button, we get some rapid fire machine gun action here. And uh, you're probably wondering what it looks like in first person as well. Well, it actually kind of lines up pretty well too. So now the hard part, bombs and missiles. These things have to drop out of this thing somehow. Or I guess missiles could be attached underneath the wing or something, but um, still yet to be determined how this is gonna work. All right, this has not been easy so far, but what I've done is created some bomb bay doors. And the really difficult thing with doing this was having enough room, first of all, to fit the mechanical parts to open the doors, but then also keep the doors not attached to each other so that they could separate from each other. Because these four by four wedges have attachment points on the end. So if they meet in the middle, they will not be able to open. So that is why I have this weird spiky looking thing here, which I hope just kind of gives a little bit of like a design style uh, aesthetic to it, but it does look a little bit awkward, I'll admit. But yeah, you can see inside here, I've got these shields holding these pieces together, but hopefully both sides will still be separate. Let's do a quick test and see if it opens. I think I programmed it to number two. Oh yeah, look at that. And then that is where we can fit all of the bombs. But now comes the question, how do I fit bombs in here? 
So obviously, if we want the bombs to be able to fall out and detach, we need detachable blocks. I might be going a little over, but am I going to just blow myself up? When I release these bombs, are they all just going to fly back to the back of this and uh, blow me up? That could probably happen. All right, so now you can see I've got this entire thing loaded up with bombs. And oh boy, I almost forgot this time. The bombs are by default set to my uh, thruster button. So let's not annihilate ourselves as soon as we try to take off. All right, let's do a quick test and see if this even works in concept. Oh, that is so many. That is so many bombs. All right, close the doors. <laughs> I was hoping that would happen. All right, but now let's actually try to drop these things in the air and see if we can do this without blowing ourselves up. Place your bets. Okay, well, that's not how that's supposed to go. All right, apparently I need a little bit more runway to take off in this thing. All right, here we go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, place your bets now. Bomb bay doors are opening. Am I going to drop these bombs or am I just going to blow myself up? Here we go in three, two, uh, uh, one, drop. What? That is one of the results I never would have predicted. The bombs shredded through the back of me. How is that even possible? How did they not explode me? Well, unfortunately, it appears uh, the bombs get highly affected by wind even before they drop out of the bomb bay doors. So that whole entire plan just uh, did not work in my favor. Oh boy. I accidentally just dropped all of the bombs inside <laughs> without opening the doors first. So let's see what happens now. Okay. Okay, that's actually that actually feels somewhat realistic almost But I do have a bunch that are still kind of there. Can you guys Can you guys kind of not can you get out? You know what? I, I know what I need to do I got a plan for this. I have so much more room in here than I thought because this is the center divider of the entire uh, wedge I have tons of room in here. Oh Okay, this isn't bad all right, my new solution, as you can see, was to attach the detachable bombs to the bomb doors themselves. And what that enables to happen is when I open the bomb doors, whoops, I accidentally pressed the wrong button. That was the detach button. Oh no, now I have a whole layer of bombs underneath me. But um, as I open the bomb doors, you can see this actually brings the bombs out of the bay and uh, hopefully when I release them, they will not shred the back of my plane apart. So um, let's go ahead and respawn gently and try this out now. All right, we are up in the air, opening the bomb doors. Come on, open up, there we go. And oh, let's not dive into the water. And three, two, one, release. Ooh, that looked promising. It wasn't over land, so we didn't actually see any explosions, but uh, we can get that when we actually do the final test flight. All right, close the bomb doors, and then we can come in for a nice, gentle, relaxing, not stressful land. Okay, all right, the hole again, it's the hole. Okay, bombs, check. One thing left on the checklist, which is the uh, missiles. So I gotta figure out how and where to fit a rocket propelled missile on this thing. All right, well, I guess let's design a missile over here. Did I go overboard with this missile? Like, look at this thing. This looks like a mini nuke, to be honest, but it's pretty much made of dynamite. It's got um, four mini thrusters on it. I think it could pick up some decent speed. I feel like I gotta try it out. Where do I fit it though? Am I really gonna strap this thing? Oh man. I don't know if this thing is gonna fit here because then my wings aren't gonna be able to do anything. This is, I made this too big. This, I went overboard with this one. All right, this is my alternative design. It's a lot more flat. Will be easier to fit attached to a wing here. Uh, let's, I don't know. Let's try it and see what happens. All right, let's do a quick proof of concept here and see if it works. Number four. Okay. I mean, it flew straight, but I think it might be better if the rockets activate before it disconnects. So that way it can have a little bit of power before it even launches. So I'm gonna do a half second delay between the thrusters. I mean, it doesn't really make that big of a difference on the ground, does it? But you know what? I think we won't really know until we do an actual mid-air test. So let's copy this to the other side. Whoops. <laughs> Guess who forgot to take off the controls on the new bombs he just added to his plane. That's right, scrap man. All right, here we go. Last thing on the list. Let's see if it works. If it does, then we paint it up and uh, try to do everything in one go. All right, 
And three, well actually, let's aim at a mountain or something. All right, three, two, one, launch. Okay, that's not bad. That looked good to me. That actually looked pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and head back. All right, now it's time to paint this thing up. And here we have it. Of course, I had to pay my respects to the origins of the wedge meme, which of course came from the orange wedges in Scrap Mechanic. So the main color of the wedge is themed after that. And then pretty much everything else is black and red to indicate like the additions to the wedges that are me. So let's take it on its ultimate test mission to see if this wedge plane can really live up to the shape that it represents. In order to do this, this plane must take off successfully from the aircraft carrier, must fly around the map demonstrating its machine guns, firing its rockets into some wall or object, showing a successful explosion, and dropping its bombs onto the ground somewhere, also demonstrating a successful explosion. I'm gonna aim for the helipad. It's gonna be kinda hard to aim these bombs, so I don't really know how they drop yet. And then come back for a landing all in one consecutive flight. Now, as far as the landing goes, I don't actually have steering on the uh, wheels or anything to control myself on the tarmac. So I will just, uh, I'm gonna be a little bit more forgiving with the landing. But successful takeoff. First thing off the checklist. Uh, up next, let's demonstrate the machine gun fire. There we go, firing into the side of the mountain here. Let's, uh, let's not hit the actual mountain or the trees. How about that? Pulling some fancy maneuvers, just trying to, just trying to trick you into thinking I don't, I'm not in control here. All right, oh, I saw some of the uh, bullets impact the side of that. And you know what? Let's aim our missiles at the hoops here. See if we can actually hit something intentionally. All right, um, nope, 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 not ready yet. Didn't have enough of a run, of run up. All right, let's try this, uh, this mech bash thing. All right, firing the missiles. Oh, I kind of meant to hit the sign, but that was actually still pretty good. All right, and then let's try to drop the bombs on the helipad. The bombs might be hard to actually see what happens because I think they get left behind the plane. Super quack, uh, super quack. Super quick because of the wind resistance. All right, so let's open up the bomb bay doors. There we go, bombs are ready. Oh man, those things really affect my aerodynamics. I might have to slow down for this. All right, and number three is to drop. Do we hit it? Whoa, that was actually better than I expected. They all seem to explode on the helipad. Let's close the doors. I actually thought it was gonna be like off too much off to the side or too early or something, but that was actually pretty good. Now, now all we need is the landing. Now, I do not feel good about the landing because I can't really turn that well or at all when I'm landing. So I don't know how this is gonna go. I also don't have any brakes when it comes to landing. So let's just hope I can have a nice straight Look at this glide. This is a nice, gentle glide, at least. All right. Why am I turning to the left a little bit? I don't like that. Oh, I need a little bit more speed. Come on. Nice and gentle. Hey, that's not bad. I think I lost something somewhere. Oh, you know what? I, I forgot I actually have my sensor sticking off of the back. So I just lost a sensor, which is fine. But I think that qualifies. We are alive. This thing is pretty much almost entirely intact minus one sensor, which is important for the landing gear. So I feel comfortable in declaring this wedge-shaped fighter plane a superior sky combat aerial vehicle. It's got maneuverability. It's got machine guns. It's got missiles. It's got bombs. It pretty much does it all. Once again, securing the wedge in its place as the superior shape. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you'll probably enjoy some other stuff on the channel that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video ends your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.